Hello, my name is Richard Wallace. I am an adjunct associate professor in the Department of Animal Sciences at the University of Illinois. I'm also a senior veterinarian for Pfizer Animal Health and the Dairy Technical Services team. Uh, what I want to do is go through a couple of things I would use as a herd manager um, as I'm evaluating uh, information and data from a day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week and month-to-month -month basis. So one of the first things I usually like to look at is uh, milk production. As a herd manager, I'm going to want to come in and take a look at what's happening on a daily basis. And because the University of Illinois herd has daily milk weights uh, that come in through our milk testing uh, milk meters, uh, our Westphalia Surge milk meters, um, we can actually get daily milk information. So one of the reports I like to look at is this daily milk uh, for the past week. It's a report we've created that we can view and I can just select that report and you can see that I can scroll through and see what's happening on an individual animal basis. I'm actually going to close it down and break it out by averages. So I have these runtime controls. I can look at an average. And so I have group one is our, our um, lot one that we can hold about 64 cows in that lot. So we only have 55 in there currently. But the last daily milk weight, they were at 88 pounds. One day ago, they were at 83. And uh, you can see a week ago, they were at 93 versus 86. Now, I notice that there's 163 and 172. I believe something happened to the milk meters uh, six and seven days ago and maybe even a little bit uh, five days ago. So something was going on with the milk meters. But uh, that's something you want to be able to check. Um, that's an interesting, I just noticed that right in here. But you will notice it happened, it looks like, across all lots. Uh, lot three is a, a lot that can hold 96 animals, and we hold, have 90 cows in there right now. They average 210 days in milk, and they're currently at 88 pounds. So it looks to me like there was some meter issues five, six, seven days ago. They got it fixed, and now we're back here four days ago, three days ago, two days ago, one day ago, and currently um, actually have a little bit more accurate information. Uh, group 7 is our north barn, and group 8 is our south barn, and then these are our dumper lots, and then this is just by Holstein breed. So now we've looked at what the Holsteins are producing, um, and you can see they're averaging about 87 pounds on a daily milk with 190 days in the milk over the 175 cows in that group. And then you can also break it out by Jersey breed. So this uh, daily milk is a very nice report to look at on a daily basis to see where we're at from a production standpoint. Uh, another thing that I might look at as a uh, veterinarian and, um, and even as a herd manager is where we're at from a health standpoint. And this is something I might look at on a monthly basis. And so we might look at our tracker reports and go to our activity tracker. And so from this activity tracker, I'm going to actually set these dates a little bit differently because um, the last data set I have here from the University Herd is as of September 11th, 2012. So I'm just going to go back from August 31st over the last year. So I'll back, back this up to, uh, let's see, does that, yeah, July 1st of 2011 through, that might be 13 months. Um, but uh, let's go August 1st. That'll give us um, so we might then select the number of cows that were fresh, uh, sold, died, culls. And then I'm going to look at health conditions that I might want to uh, follow and evaluate. And actually, we can just, we're going to select all for now, put them all over here, and add them to this report, and just do a quick preview and see how we're doing on this report. There we go. Um, so you can see there were 277 calvings over the last year from August, uh, actually 13 months. We're able to do 13 months here. Um, and uh, we had 18 calvings in August of 2011 and 27 calvings in August of 2012. We sold 76 animals over that period of time with 23 animals that died. Uh, you can see there was maybe a little bit increase over the summer of 2012, and I don't know whether that was heat stress related. Uh, one of the nice things with this report is I can select that report 
and you can see why those five animals um, were um, euthanized or died. So we had a euthanasia on one, we had a cow that had some toxic mastitis, and then no comments on some of the other ones. But we can actually then select the cow and go into her status and see if we can figure out um, what might have happened. Actually, nothing listed on this cow for why she might have left but uh, gives you the ability to then go into each of these reports. Uh, we can take a look and we saw, we can see over the last year we had 47 retained placentas. And so if you select that value, you can see the 47 cows here listed that had retained placentas in their, in their um, individual cow page. If I right click on this value, I can then break it out by date. And so it tells me how many I had by each individual date, but more probably more appropriately would be break that out by month on this dairy. So we can look at it by month of the year. And now we can see we had about 6% retained placentas in January, creeped up over the summer months, and then dropped back off, whereas December uh, we only had it back down to that 6% again, but a little bit higher retained placenta rate in the uh, summer months than we did in uh, other months. So we can do that with retained placentas. We can also do that with mastitis. So if we do that over the um, month of the year, you can see January and February through most of the winter, pretty good. Things started to creep in up in the summer and, um, and then in December of 2011. Now, remember I set the data here from August through um, August. So if you want to look at it over the last 12 months, this is going to set it up basically based on the report that we have. So December of 2011 sits here. This would be September of 2011, and then we're working our way through the current months. So we had a little bit of an outbreak of mastitis uh, in December of 2011, and as I remember talking to the herd manager about this, it had to do with some sand issues and not getting being able to get enough sand, and so we had some bedding issues that led to increased exposure to the T-den and an increased amount of mastitis. So this, these tracker reports are very valuable from my standpoint of looking at different conditions that we're tracking over time and trying to determine is there any prevalence or any rhyme or reason to why we're seeing additional cases of mastitis. Uh, some other reports that I might actually use on a little bit more regular basis comes back over here to the overview screen where I have a list of cows that are due to come in heat in the next seven days. And I probably need to backdate this from today's date to the day that I collected the information uh, from the farm. Uh, 926, I'm sorry, is when I... Um, and so I'm just changing the reference date here to be more appropriate to the data set that I have. So the most recent, the last time I downloaded the herd was on September 26th. And so as of com what this computer thinks and what the program thinks is these would be the animals that are due to come into heat over the next seven days. C represents the number of cows. H represents heifers that would be due to come in times bread, and then you can get their uh, ID number sitting in where the cow is. So if you're out doing heat detection, very easy way to take this report out and then go ahead and see which animals are due to come into heat. Um, cows that are due in the next 30 days, so this allows us to track uh, due date. And so remember, uh, today is actually October 5th or 6th or something like that. Um, but I can take a look at where we're at. So most of these have probably already calved. But because I set the date back to when I collected the database to, uh, to show you here, you can see that we can look at cows that are due and then cows that are due to go dry. And so as I'm looking at creating a dry off sheet, I might want to look at uh, milk production as well as somatic cell score and make some decisions that I might dry off this cow a little bit earlier because she's only at 34 pounds of milk and she's got a fairly high somatic cell count. Might be one that I might want to pull off and dry earlier. So those would be typical reports that I might use as a herd manager. Uh, there's many other reports in here we can use as well. Let me show you one more that I might use as far as uh, since we did have some milking parlor issues. Again, because the university herd is tied into a daily milk meter system through our Westphalia Surge GIA meters, we can actually evaluate what's going on with the milk meters. And so I can go uh, seven days back and take a look at those milk meters 
and see if we're having some milk meter issues. So we had one meter that was off by 5%. And um, then you have the ability to take a look at each one of the stalls. We've got a double 12 parallel parlor. You can see how each one of those meters is performing. So some of the things that I might use as a herd manager would be some of these milking parlor reports. I might also look at something like um, our uh, flow rate by, by group. So if I just go back to today's date, where I can look at what kind of parlor efficiency we're having, looking at average flow rate, duration by milking number, so shift one, shift two, and shift three by lot gives me ability to manage uh, my milking milkers. And then one of the we might look at is parlor efficiency, looking at parlor throughput, so how efficiently are we using the parlor. And so again, some great information for me as a herd manager to work through and, and monitor what's going on uh, within the herd.